Hey guys, and welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to do custom update section with new state-of-the-art Yolo V7 model. So we're actually going to take a model and then we're going to deploy it with OpenCV. I actually have a course, so this is one of the videos inside of my course. So if you're interested in that, if you want to know like how we can generate your own data set, generate your own custom data set, train the models, how we can label your data set, uh, we'll jump into Google Colab, we will train an actual like Yolo V7 model. I also go over some of the theory behind uh, the architecture of the Yolo V7 model, and then we will also see the results. Then we basically have our data set, we train our model, then we export our data set both to like the PyTorch format, but also the ONNX format. As I'm going to show you in this video here, we're going to deploy it with the PyTorch format. With OpenCV, we're going to lo run live inference on a webcam where we're actually like, detecting these objects live with the Yolo V7 model. So if you're interested in the whole course where we go over like everything from like creating the model, generating our own custom data set, training the model, labeling the data set, and all those different kind of things. I have tons of videos. I have pl 20 plus videos about that in my course. And we also have some quizzes and all those different kind of things. Also the code will be available inside of the course as well. So we're now ready to do inference with our custom YOLO V7 model. So here we have actually like downloaded our data set. So we're both converted to, to the ONX format. And we also have this PyTorch weight file. So we both have uh, the best train model from our uh, like YOLO V7 model from the data set. So we have our best.pt and we also have our best ONNX. So start with here, we're going to act like just do inference in OpenCV. We're both going to do it with the with the PT file and also with the ONNX with OpenCV. So basically here, we're just going to use the detect script that I've modified for um, only like webcam and inference. So basically here, we just have like all these imports that we need to do first of all. So this is from the YOLO V7 repository. And then I made the changes so we only do it on the webcam. So basically here, we have our tech function. We pass in the source. So that will be our index to our webcam. Then we have our weights here, which will be the weight file. Then we just load those weights into our uh, neural network so, or like into our model. So that is act like just if we're not going to use the ONNX, which we're going to do in the next video. There are some benefits with using the ONNX format um, over the PT format, uh, which is basically that which you can just directly implement them into OpenCV without using these utilities functions from uh, YOLO V7. We can also like deploy them on S devices um, and so on. And we can also like use it for all the other different kind of like frameworks. So if you want to do like inference with the ONNX runtime with uh, OpenCV with all the other different kind of like frameworks where you can load in ONNX models. Uh, so basically here we're just going to open up our webcam. We also have our device. So if you have a GPU available, you can use that or else it will just use the CPU. We also need to specify the image size, interest uh, like intersection over union here. So we have a threshold for that. So how much do we actually like want to have to have our uh, boundary boxes on top of our act like objects. So we set up a threshold for that. And then we also have a confident threshold here. So if we have like too many false positives, uh, we can increase the threshold or if we have too many detections, uh, we can also like lower or like uh, increase our confidence threshold here. Uh, or if we have, if we don't get any detection at all, we should like, like just lower our threshold value here. Uh, so we get more detections. So first of all here, we're going to set up our webcam. So we're just going to check if the source is numeric. Then we can go down and select our device. Basically here, we're just setting up device so we can choose if we're using uh, the, uh, the CUDA or like the CPU. And then we just specify that when we're going to call the function. Then we're going to load the model. We just have these utility functions here that we're going to use. So we basically just pass in the weights and also the device. So we actually load our model into our device as well if we're using CUDA. So basically we're just loading in the files. Then we have our model variable over here or the instance of our model. Then we basically just do these strides. We also set up the image size for our images that we want to pass through the model. So we have our image size, which is specified the image size and also the number of strides, strides that we want to do. Here we just check if we're using half position, then we just set the model here to floating point 16. So that is if we're using like, for example, um, the GPU. So if you're using the CPU, we don't need like half position, but if we're using the GPU, we need to set it to floating point 16 bits. Here we set the data loader. So we basically just check if our webcam, so if you're going to use the webcam, then we're going to like check the image show. We're going to view the image. So these are just utility functions doing wrappers to like OpenCV functions. Uh, so again, this is just a function from the YOLO v7 um, GitHub repository that just modified for our 
project and uh, for our own custom like yolv 7 detection so we don't have all the other different kind of like redundant things that we don't need and then i'm going to show you afterwards how we can deploy them with the onnx framework where we just like open it up we just take our model open it up with onnx then we do the inference with that so we don't need to like uh we don't depend on all these utility functions from um yolv 7 then we're going to set if we want to do a CUDI and then a benchmark. So we can set this to true to speed up the constant image size um, inference, which is the case in our case or like in our project. Then we're going to load our stream from our source. So basically here we just create our data set. So we just like resize the image to the correct dimensions. And then we also just set the source here. So basically we'll just take our webcam. We pass our webcam in here. Then it will just load in an image from that webcam and return it here, resize it, and then it will throw it back into the data set. Then we can basically just take this data set, which will be, which will be an image. And then we just throw that through our model. So here we just get the names and the colors of the classes that we want to detect. So we have these different kind of like cops that we want to detect in our image. And then we can just directly run inference here. So here, if the device type here is 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 um is not the CPU, if we're so for example like running on the GPU, we need to pass our model and also our data set to our device, which we're going to do here. We will do it to the, uh, the with the data set down here at the bottom later on. But basically here, we're just going to run a follow up here through our whole data set. We're going to take the video capture. We have the path and we also have the images. But in this example here, we're basically just going to have the images from our webcam that we're loading in. Then here we set up a torch tensor. We put the torch tensor of the image to our CUDA device. If you're using CUDA, if you're not using, like if you're using CPU, it will just throw it on the CPU. But I'm going to test it with a CUDA in this video here. And then we can see how fast it actually like runs when we're doing inference. We just set up some different kind of like things here, some pre-processing where we normalize our image. So we just have values between zero and one instead of a zero and 255, which is a requirement for the model before we pass it in. Then we're going to do some warm up. So basically here, we're just going to do some warm up with our images. Then we can go down directly to the inference. So basically here, we just have our model. We pass in our image to the model. We take the served element of that, which will be the prediction. So we have our model, throw in the image. We do a forward pass with our model. And then we get the predictions here, which will contain like all the boundary boxes, all the classes, the confidence scores, like the intersection over union and all those different kind of things. And then we can apply like non-maximal suppression so if we want to have like more uh, reliable and also more robust bounding boxes and predictions, we can apply this non-maximum suppression, uh, suppression. So we basically just throw in our predictions, confident threshold and in, um, interact, in intersection over union threshold. So we just pass that in and then we'll get our new predictions, which will just be these uh, better predictions from our model. Then we can just process the detections. We won't really cover that in details, but basically it just takes the predictions iterates over all the predictions and then it just plots all the boundary boxes the class it, it rescales the coordinates back here to the original image size again um, and then we just draw like all the different kind of like information that we have so we just plot all the boxes all the labels and also we can also get the confidence score out uh, and stuff like that but basically here we're just drawing the bounding box and also the label for the object that we're detecting then we're just going to have im show so we're basically just going to show what we're detecting in the image we also have some timers going on so we can see how fast it actually like does inference so we can both time the inference speed on our gpu or on the cpu then we just have our main function here so basically we just check our if cuda is available if that is available we use the cuda device or else we're just going to use the cpu we're just printing the device here so we spit so we actually like know what device i'm using and then with torch that not no grad here so we're not calculating gradient here because we're just doing inference uh, we're not training right now and then we just call this detection we pass in the index of our webcam so we have zero here then we have our weights file so this will be the pytorch weight file so not the one that we converted to onnx but this is directly the output from our yolo v7 uh, model after training we pass in the device so we have cuda we pass in the image size that we trained our model on the intersection over union threshold and also the confidence threshold over here to the right so now we're basically we went through the whole code here, so this is how we can do inference with the YOLV7 model. And now we're ready to run the program and see the results. So now we're running the program here. First of all, we can see the GPU that we're using. So here we can see that we're using a 4090 GPU. We're fusing the layers. We're setting up like a model summary. We also get like um, the image size that we load in and stuff like that. And then when we actually like do inference, we will also get the inference speed. But here we just print out the device that we're using. So we're using CUDA right now. 
And then if we take the camera up here, we act like start doing the detections. So here we can see that we act like do the detection on the, the cops. So here we can see in the front here, we're detecting the cocker cop with a confidence score of, of about like 0 0.50. We have the Halloween cop with a confidence score of about like 0 0.6. And then we also have the white cop over here to the left of 0 0.75. So it's actually like really confident uh, with that type of object. So again, this is really good result that we get and it runs really fast. So let me just make sure here down at the bottom. Uh, so we actually like run around like 100 frames per second here. So it's around like 10 milliseconds on this 4090 GPU. If we just go over here to the left, we can see that we have this hand painted cup. We can also detect that. We can like try to like rotate it around. We can see that we still keep track of this cup here, even though we are rotating it around. We can take it up here in the hand, rotate it around. Here in the top, we lose detection. So we do, didn't really have that many samples with the cups from the top. But again, as long as we can see the, the cup here, we have a really high confidence that this is act like a hand painted cup, which is correct. And again, remember that we only had like around like 100 images in our data set and now we're actually like able to do this custom custom object detection with our YOLO v7 model so again the YOLO v7 model it's really good it, it has some really like high accuracy as we can see here it just keeps track from frame to frame so all these frames here it detects the cop it doesn't look track of them even though I'm moving like the camera around it just it snaps on the object and it just keeps it really really high accuracy it doesn't really lose track and it's fast it's really, really fast. So this is a really crazy model, like way better performance compared to like, for example, like Yolo V5 and all the other like different kind of like optic detectors. Again, you saw how, how easy it was to just generate your data set with RoboFlow, train it, do the annotation, and then just do inference here. So right now we're just doing inference with the PyTorch script. We can just directly use that. You will get access to all of the code so you can directly run it on your own computer if you're using the GPU or the CPU, but this is some really nice results. We can try with some of the other different kind of like cops here. So we have the white cop. Again, if we just take it up here. So m most of the images that we took was actually like with the cops a bit further away, but just to make sure that it actually like works, if we take them closer, it does. So it is actually like a pretty robust and general model. We can even like rotate it around. It still keeps track of it. We can try with some of the other cops here as well. So this Halloween cup here is a bit more unique, even though I take my hand around it, we start to lose track of it because we haven't really trained on that. But here, when we get the cup handle over to the right, it is just way more certain that this acts like a cup and not just a cup, but the Halloween cup. We can also take the cocker cup here. This is pretty unique, unique as well. It just keeps the detections, even though we can maybe try to like move it around here, still detects it. We can even see, even though the white cup here is occluded in the background, it just still does a really good um, good job at actually like tracking or and detecting this object. We can see how much it's actually like occluded here in the background, and it still does the detection. I'm actually like pretty imp impressed with these results here uh, from this model here that we only train like on 50 epochs. Again, you can train it for more epochs. Try to see if you can increase the performance. You can also try it with some of the larger models that we have talked about. But this is some really crazy results, and I'm also like really excited to see the results when we're going to do the inference with the own and next model to see. If we actually like get a better like better performance or if we get like faster inference time so this is really cool i'm really excited for it we get some really crazy results and i'm even like i'm actually like mind blown by the results that we get here you can just do it on all the other different kind of like custom optics i hope you guys are, are like creating some really nice data sets uh custom data sets with some other different kind of like optics of instead of cops you can do like cars like leaves maybe like apples hanging on a tree do custom object detection, different kind of like fruits and, and all these different kind of things. So it's really cool. I'm just really excited to see the results with the ONNX model.